Hey, Mrs. Z, what are you doing? Well, I'm I'm thinking, and I'm actually comparing the periodic table to a calendar. Why would you do that? Well, I'm doing that because the calendar has a lot of similarities with the periodic table. How so? In the sense that all of these are recurring properties. Let me show you. The weeks recur. This is January, and the weeks recur. Every one of these rows represents a week. As we look down, every one of these is Sunday. Every one of these days is Monday, and every one of these Tuesday. And it keeps recurring, just like the periodic table. Had you ever thought about that? No, never. That's a great idea. So now you know that periodicity refers to recurring properties. Recurring properties in a calendar or on the periodic table. That's why it's called the periodic table. Woohoo! Jumping up for joy, Dmitry Mendeleev. Look at that. He is so excited because back in 1869, he actually came up with a system to organize the elements. Because before that, it was a mess. A bunch of scientists, one scientist did one thing, another scientist did another thing with the organizing the elements that were known at the time. And guess what? Everybody was confused. Just totally confused. So. Our fellow here, our handsome fellow, the two agree girls, handsome fellow, saved the day. Because he came up with his organization. All right, so I've already mentioned to you that in the beginning it was different. It was confusing because everybody had a different table. But Dimitri organized them in order of atomic masses. But he actually took a bunch of cards put them in place, organized them, and they, he organized them in periods and in groups or families, and those families had similar properties. And that's what guided him. He was so cool and so smart that he even was able to leave gaps for certain elements that had, that had, never, had not been discovered at the time. And that was amazing, because people thought, this guy is nuts. He's saying that there are elements that don't exist, and he left gaps, and sure and behold, those elements later came, and they were placed in those very spots that he had left. All right, so the modern periodic table, his periodic table was organized in atomic mass, but the modern periodic table is organized by atomic numbers. But there weren't too many changes there. All right, so we're going to talk about groups. Groups are vertical. In, a, in the periodic table, and we're going to talk about periods. Periods are the rows. So this is period one, period two, period three, period four, five, six, and seven. And now, by now you know some electron configuration, and if you do, then you will make some connections and some relationships here. As you remember, the information that's given, we have the atomic number, the element name, of course, the atomic mass of the element, and the element symbol. And we have already learned about what these represent. So here's the periodic table, and a quick reminder. This periodic table gives you different colors, just so you remember certain characteristics. All of these purple ones over here are metals. The blue are nonmetals. They have characteristics of nonmetals. And these purple ones in here are the semi-metals or metalloids. These over here will fit in here. I'll tell you about that a little later on. Woohoo! A happy periodic table. All right. I already mentioned that this would be what the periodic table would look like if we inserted those two rows at the bottom. So it would be quite large. 
All right, so now I want to tell you a little bit about the families and the or groups, families or groups. First over here are the alkali metals. Here are the alkali earth metals and the transition metals are right over here. We have way over here the noble gases, the halogens, the oxygen family, nitrogen family, carbon family, and boron family. You may want to pause and take out a periodic table or print one out and write down these na the names of the families so that you have them. All right, so let's go to the periodic table in the classroom. Well, our classroom periodic table has all the information except that I don't see the names of the families. But I want to show you what they are based on the elements. Right here, alkali metals. Notice that hydrogen is the orphan child. These are the alkaline earth metals. These over here are the transition metals. And we come to this side and see the noble gases, the halogens, the oxygen family, nitrogen family, carbon family, and boron family. Notice that these are named after the first element in that family or that group. Groups and periods. And notice how this fits. This would fit right in here. This is element number 56, atomic number 56, 57, 58, 59, and so on. And over here we have 88 and 89, 90, and so on. So they fit right in here, but our periodic table would be huge. So we place it here so that we don't have to have a huge periodic table. Okay? Okay, so we've looked at the periodic table, but I'm going to tell you that in the first, in the alkali metals, we have three interesting, three very interesting elements. Lithium, sodium, and potassium. And they react pretty violently in water. Do you want to see it? <laughs> 